Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is amazing. I'm gonna be honest with you, your day may be starting better than mine because I noticed yesterday that we had some water at the bottom of Salt and Pepper's enclosure. And I thought, well, maybe we were mopping, maybe some water spilled or something like that. So I cleaned it up really good last night and I came in and sure enough, you can see there's water there, meaning there's a leak in salt and peppers enclosure. Oh my God, you know, water features are so amazing. They look great. I mean, look how incredible it is, but what a pain. Now, I don't think that the actual tank, or I sure hope anyways, the actual tank isn't leaking. I think there's a chance it could be the waterfall, it could be the pump fault over here, or there's a chance that it could be the fittings that actually hook everything together. I have to peel this panel off here because that's the only way I can get underneath it. I'm gonna have to rip that off, go under there, try to diagnose where the water is coming from that is leaking onto the ground and then see if there's a quick fix for it or if it's gonna be a massive fix. I am nervous. I am definitely stressed out about it, but uh, we're gonna do the best we can do to make this thing go away. Cause hey, we can't have the tank leaking on the ground. That's not good for anything. So what do you say we buckle up, push our problem side, you guys send me positive energy and let's uh, see if we can get this thing fixed. Let's take a look in here and see what we have going on. <sighs> see if I can see anything at all in here. I could definitely see some kind of residue over here, but I don't really see any other leaking happening, which is definitely a concern of mine. So you can see the water filling down here and you can feel the, see the water filling over there, but I don't see any other leaking. What I thought was gonna happen was it would either be leaking right up here or it would be leaking right over here that we could, and I guess there's a possibility that that's it right here. Could it be just leaking down here? Cause you definitely see some spots over here that look like they're damp, but I don't see any real water. Yeah, there's a little water right there. There it is. There's that drip. Just that little tiny drip right there I think is actually my problem. Let me see if I can't get a little closer look over here. Yep, that's wet. Okay. Okay, so that's where my leak is right there. Right up on top there is where that leak is. You can see the wet over there. It's a really small leak. Nothing too major at all. So now I have to really think about how that is leaking. And what's happening is it's leaking down to here. That's why this area is not wet, which I was expecting it to be wet. And you can see a little wetness in the corner there. Okay. All right, let's get back out of here and assess what we've got to do. So in a way, I guess it's kind of best case, worst case scenario here because there's not a ton of water leaking. That is really good. I was worried about it being like really bad. The other thing is I don't think it's the actual tank itself that's leaking. I think what's happening is right here when the waterfall actually the water goes, there's probably a little pinhole leak somewhere under here that's leaking behind this here and that's leaking into there. Now the question is, is that for now, I could do one of two things. I could either try to shut this off and reseal underneath there to see if I could fill the pinhole, which it's like kind of like finding a needle in the haystack, to be honest with you. Or the other thing I could do is maybe flex seal the actual area where this would be leaking into. Don't know if that's gonna work, to be totally honest with you, because there's a chance that this could leak back here and where I'm sealing from behind where I think that the water is kind of going, uh, it still might get down here and I might have to go back and seal that waterfall anyway. So I'm not sure what to do here. I think that obviously let's do the simplest thing first, right? And the simplest thing first would be to just go ahead and flex seal that area where it looks like it's wet on the inside. Give that maybe a day or two, see if this water dries up. If it doesn't dry up, then I'm gonna have to shut this down, drain all the water out and reseal the entire waterfall, which is gonna be a pretty big job because I really don't know where it's leaking, right? I can't really tell. But again, the water comes down here, but also curves back down here. And when it curves back 
back down here, you can see all this is wet here. So if there's any weak spots over here that aren't completely sealed, even the little pinhole, that water is going to find its way and then get back in there and then ultimately leak onto the floor. So we thought that we had this thing pretty sealed pretty good, but again, just through wear and tear that it can kind of come apart. This is, again, the problem with having water features is you're going to deal with problems every now and then. So let's just go ahead, uh, see if we can't flex seal this thing up. Hopefully it's a quick fix. Hopefully by tomorrow there won't be any water on the ground. And uh, all in all, it's not at least a horrible situation. It could still be a pretty major fix that I have to do in the next couple days, but at least it doesn't look like structurally we're leaking as far as the tank, which would be catastrophic. Guys, I know it seems crazy that I use Flex Seal, and it's, it seems like kind of a hokey product, but this has saved my butt more times than I want to admit, to be totally honest with you. You can seal stuff literally when it's wet and everything with this stuff. Again, not a paid advertisement. Uh, <laughs> I almost had a brand deal with them once, but we don't have it right now. But uh, this hopefully uh, will solve my problem. Just gonna crawl underneath there, spray it up as best as I possibly can, and hopefully tomorrow we'll come in and there won't be any water. So uh, maybe Chrysler's diverted? Not sure yet. Okay, so uh, that's about it guys. I mean, that is as best as I can do for the moment. That Flex Seal should really seal up that at least spot. And if that's where it's actually leaking down into, we should be pretty good. My concern is, is there a chance it could be leaking on the other side of that wall? And if that's the case, then I'm in trouble. But I think that it can't do that. I think that on the other side of that wall is actually inside the tank. So I don't think that it could leak anywhere but there. I think that's the only place. So hopefully that'll seal it up. We'll find out tomorrow if there's any water. I'll keep you guys updated. But for now, not as bad as I thought. If this worked, that was a pretty quick fix. Uh, then we can get back to our regular scheduled vlog. So uh, hopefully crisis is diverted and hopefully I'll have good news for you guys tomorrow. <laughs> In this case, it's not egg time, it's slug time. And I am so bummed out, guys, because this girl right here, which is this crazy, wild, red stripey thing that I don't even know the whole genetics. I just know it's a red stripe and then it has some crazy cool patterns. I bred that to a pastel leopard clown ball python and she laid six slug eggs today. That's right, six slug eggs, not even one good egg. I was so excited to produce this into a clown ball python in particular a pastel leopard clown they would all just be hats but still to be able to have this genetics in it could produce some really good stuff you know the Pompeii stuff is from red stripe clown of course with black pastel but nevertheless a lot of really cool stuff's coming in and then with this being a red stripe goofy crazy who knows what genetics wow we could have produced some things so that's the way it goes she is a first time girl she's not that big and that happens I tell you what I was so bummed this was definitely a top five clutch I was excited about this year but you know what Things go on and things happen. We still have, I think, about seven or eight more ball python clutches to go for the year. So egg time today was slug time. Tomorrow, hopefully egg time, will be actual egg time. Wanted to give you guys a little update on this little Suma ball python. Of course, that jet black ball python that hatched out about a week and a half ago. It shed out and looks absolutely wonderful. What an amazing animal. Again, this is a Suma ball python, which is the super version of a mahogany, but this is also a hat for pied. So we can actually produce the black and white pie ball ball python with this, that panda pied. But the panda pied is typically either cine or black pastel. I'm not sure what they call the super suma pied or if it's even been produced for that matter. The fact is, is that I'm pretty excited about this. I'm gonna raise it up for sure. And it is looking absolutely wonderful. I mean, what a great snake. And by the way, speaking of black ball pythons, we actually have a clutch that hatched out that has another one. But this all black ball python genetically is a little bit different. Rather than being a suma or a super mahogany, this is actually a black pastel and a cinnamon pastel bred back together. Now the super cinnies are a little bit more brown. The super black pastels oftentimes have like nose issues and stuff like that. So I try not to do those breedings, but the black pastel and the cinnamon pastel together produce this nice jet black snake that looks very similar to the Suma, by the way. It does have a little bit longer nose, to be honest with you, but absolutely wonderful. And then there's this monkey right here that I was so happy about. And it's very similar to what they would call a silver bullet, which is basically a super cinny 
Mini or Super Black Pastel Pastel, but this is actually the lesser version of it. So this is a Black Pastel, a Cine Super, the Super version, which would be all black, but then you add the lesser and it turns into a silver ball python. And that thing is absolutely a ripper. Absolutely love it. And then we just have a little black pastel here. Again, that's what the mom was, was a black pastel lesser. Then we have a little Sydney Woma here and another little Woma ball python. So nevertheless, pretty awesome snake. Super excited about it. Absolutely incredible. This silver one, oh my goodness gracious, that thing is unbelievable. As you guys probably no, I haven't traveled since February. I've been in town and you guys know I travel a ton. So I've been starting to work on this new idea of a travel. I've been wanting to do this for years. I think that Jay Anthony that works with me, Noah and myself, are gonna literally like rent a small mobile home and we're gonna travel from here, probably down to St. Louis, Oklahoma, Texas, over to New Mexico, into Arizona, maybe even up to Las Vegas. And along the way, we're gonna stop at cool animal places. I don't know, do you wanna see something like that? We'll do it in November, probably the end of October, early November is what I'm thinking. Maybe like a 12 or 14 day trip, but I wanna know, do you wanna see a series like that? Where you would see, you know, kind of the hilarity of traveling, what we're gonna do. We'd be stopping along the way. We would certainly do animals every day, you know, some cool animal, whether it's a collection or a zoo or something that we would do, get some hands on stuff like that but also bring you along on the journey of uh, four guys in an RV for 14 days traveling across the country it's just I just am kind of dying right now and of course one thing is if my anxiety is good enough to do it right now I'm probably not in this position to be able to make that trip but I think by November I'll be in a position where I'll be able to make the trip and absolutely enjoy it so number one I want to know in the comments would you guys dig that trip would that be something that you guys would really buy into getting away from the Reptarium, and getting away from BHB I don't want you guys to miss it too much of course we could check back in with these guys every now and then. Lori could send us some stuff. But the fact is, is that I want to know that. Number two, do you have any places from Detroit down into Texas, over into Arizona that you'd want us to stop at? Is there a place like, you've got to go see that? I'd like to know your list in the comments so I can maybe reach out to people and make this just one crazy cool 12 or 14 day road trip that you guys will enjoy as much as we will. So let me know in the comments what you guys think and if you have any suggestions for us. Well guys, we definitely see a little bit more water down here, but that could have been residual water that was down underneath that's just spilling out. I don't see any puddling, so hopefully that's gonna work. I don't know. If not, the next step is gonna be ridiculous. I'm gonna have to rip this whole front end off and really get in there and find out where the heck things are going from. So let's hope and pray this works out. If you guys enjoyed this video, let's go in a completely different direction. Here's a playlist of my most popular videos that I've ever put out on the platform. You can check it out right there if you so choose. Could you all also do me a favor, right up in this corner, you can subscribe to my podcast channel called Checking In every Wednesday. We're starting to do Fridays and Saturdays here coming up. New podcast room gonna be built out next week. I can't wait to show you that. On this side, you can subscribe to this vlog channel. Please turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to somebody, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.